Wow, we've lost a preseason friendly. Eric Ten Hag. Woo. It's all falling apart. No, it's not all falling apart. That was a frustrating defeat there against an Atletico Madrid team that was pure Atletico Madrid. What, they got like two, three cynical yellow cards. Fred got a red card. McTominay with his collar up. Had the dog in him. He started a fight. United, look, let's speak about the overall game. I'm going to speak about Christian Eriksen's debut. Please stick around for my comments and you can let me know what you think down in the comments as well. But overall, I think Eric Ten Hag will be okay with what happened, with what we saw there today. It's really frustrating and it ended with that 1-0 defeat. Cracking goal by Jao Felix. Quality shone through at the end. United, if we had taken our chances across the game, we would have won that game. But in the first five minutes, we were getting outplayed, outpressed. We looked scared to have possession. Maguire and Lindelof with Freddie McTominay. We didn't have a ball carrier from deep. We didn't have somebody inside those four there who wanted the ball, who received the ball. And by that, Atletico Madrid knew what to do. They were boxing Fred in. I think he had four players around him at most times. And we couldn't play out from the back with the ball. First five to ten minutes, we had just as little control in that game as we did have in the, fir in the games against Atletico Madrid in the Champions League. But as that game progressed, once we got past that first ten minutes, we started to exert an element of control. I tell you, he was extremely impressive in that first half. And I'll be honest, he's just impressed me this whole preseason tour, really. That's Tyrell Manasseh. I think he's played himself into contention to start against Brighton. I think he should be starting against Brighton. Luke Shaw was missing today because of an illness. Uh, maybe he'll be fit enough to play against Rayo Vallecano tomorrow. But Malasia, I thought, was quite impressive in that first half. Uh, for me, overall, I would say our man of the match was probably Fred. If we're looking for the biggest... I'm not going to take like mega, mega, mega positives from losing 1-0. But I'm also not going to say that the, uh, the house is collapsing because it's not. Uh, what today exposed a little bit, which we know, we knew, squad strength is not there in terms of the depth. Now, that's rare. That's not really going to come uh, straight away for Eric Ten Hag, but we've definitely got it exposed, I think, a little bit today. Without Jaden Sancho, we had no threat on our right-hand side, and I will speak about Ilanga. But Fred, man, it's about time that people stopped calling it McFred. Scott McTominay and Fred, two individuals, two separate footballers who should be um, sort of marked in their own right. Fred today, pretty damn impressive. Shame he got a red card. But it was just Atletico were just pushing everyone's buttons the entire game. It's just what Atletico Madrid do. A team with such high morals. Ah, man, they're assholes. That's how they play football. That's how they've won football. That's why well, they lost Champions League finals. But who am I talking about Champions League finals? I can't remember what they're like. But Fred, in a dynamic ball-winning role, he has a role to play in this team. We need a ball-carrying deep, playmaker aka Frankie de Jong to play alongside him for that midfield to work properly but Fred today good I think so anyway more than good in fact I thought Fred was probably our man of the match I thought Marcus Rashford looked pretty sharp in that first half in pretty much the whole game actually Cer certainly when Rashford was pick picking that ball out of the air with a fantastic first touch Rashford looks better this preseason that's for sure one player who I think we kind of got to have a question and a conversation about is Anthony Alanga Anthony Langa was chosen by Eric Ten Hag to come in for Jadon Sancho, who missed the game. And Anthony Langa, he didn't impress. And I'll be honest, during this preseason tour so far, Anthony Langa hasn't taken to the stage in the same way that Donny van der Beek hasn't, even when he came on today. He hasn't in the whole preseason tour. Don't think Scott McTominay has. I'll put Anthony Langa in that category. Langa is somebody who has such blistering natural pace. When you play on the counter attack, you're going to get something good out of Anthony Langa. But when you're playing in these sorts of, in the team that we're doing now, uh, which is more about possession-based, slow movement, a little bit more technicality required. Uh, it seems like he's being found out a little bit. Now, I've got... Can he develop? That's down to him. Let's find out. But at this moment in time, it's not gone too well for me on the preseason tour. I'll tell you who it went well for today. Mm -mm. Took me four minutes to speak about Christian Eriksen. I bet you've already turned off by now, but if you haven't, now we can swoon over Christian Eriksen. My, 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 my. It kind of makes you realise that I think so. Like Bruno Fernandes has been, is, has been fantastic for Manchester United since he came in. He's capable of the Hollywood pass, but he's equally as capable of just doing some mad shit. Christian Eriksen, in that first 10 minutes, there was a ball over into the, port, into the corner. I think it was with Tyrell Manassir. Then a wonderful driven cross in. And then that corner that Harry Maguire's square head managed. Harry Maguire wins so many headers and scores so few goals from corners. It's infuriating. He actually played quite well today, 
I think overall. But Christian Eriksen, man, proper just wand of a right foot. And it, as I said, it, it makes it, it makes me remember how much I think we've been starved of that player. You remember, you remember back out under Fergie, one of our greatest weapons was having Rooney or Scholes or Carrick or somebody deep who could ping that 30, 40 yard pass, switch the play with such precision and accuracy that it was always a way, it was always an out. We always had that out every time. Christian Eriksen will probably be able to bring that back. Set piece delivery, just composure on the ball. Lovely. First 20 minutes, let's see how fit and capable he is going to be for the Brighton game. Hopefully, I think he should get another 20, 30 minutes tomorrow. We didn't see Lissandro Martinez. Uh, is that an indication that uh, Martinez is not going to be ready for Brighton? I would probably say that's the case, which is a shame. Uh, but that maybe is an example there of what happens when you don't get your signings done in time. And we all know that's the case. But Christian Eriksen, if we're judging that 20-minute performance... As long as he can get fitness and more fitness under his belt between now and next week. Maybe next week will again come a little bit too soon for Christian Eriksen to start that first game. Or maybe the week after. But that, as a first little 20-minute cameo, I'm happy about. Now, overall, as I said, it's a real shame that that goal went in at the end there. Because we had the measure of Atletico Madrid for the majority of that game. And if you compare that performance to what we did against Atletico Madrid back in March in the Champions League when we got... We didn't just get played off the park. It's like we didn't even play in that game. We were just chasing their coattails, both fixtures. And it was a languor away at Atletico Madrid, wasn't it? You got that equaliser against the run of play. It was exactly what it was expected to be like against Atletico Madrid. But today, after that first opening 5-10 minutes where they were pressing us, De Gea looked a bit nervous. Maguire and Lindelof looked nervous. Fred and McTominay didn't show themselves as options deep enough to get from out from the back with the ball. So we were going through our fullback. We struggled. And if that had continued throughout the whole game, I think we would have lost quite significantly. But we didn't. We got a little bit of an element of control. We started to play not through the middle. It was through Mal Malasia, who was where we were getting our threat, down the left-hand side in that first half. And that's why I think, as I say, Malasia was significant for United in that game. And it, I just like the kid. I like him. It, when he tucks inside, some good passing range to Rashford in that first half, the ball over the top and a little bit of a driven ball as well, finding Rashford in space. With the balls in behind. That's what we should be doing more of. That's what fullbacks should be capable of doing. We just haven't really seen that enough from Luke Shaw. But also, I think he really helped Fred. Because Matasia, we know what he does. He tucks inside. He doesn't always go out in the overlap. He's capable of it. But a lot of the times, when United go forward, Matasia tucks inside as an inverted fullback and basically becomes a, an extra midfielder. That makes it easier for Fred inside that role to be a little bit more aggressive in the tackle. Because he knows full well He's got Malasia covering the space in behind him. That's what teammates do. That's how a team works. Malasia definitely operates inside that Ten Hag system better than Luke Shaw does naturally. As I said, overall, I think there's more positives to take from that game than negatives. And I'm not just doing that some sort of blind naivety. It's a shame that that, that game ended in, in a defeat. If Martial had his scoring boots on in that first half. Well, we had a couple of clear-cut chances. He certainly did. Certainly that one that got the sort of ball broken. It went behind and he spooned his chance over the bar. As I said, the concern I've got from that game is probably with Anthony Langer. I think Victor Lindelof and Harry Maguire, we know their limitations. We know exactly where Lissandro Martinez is going to slot in at that left centre-back position. And I think, hopefully, he's going to help be that sort of driver from deep. We need Frankie de Jong. We know that. And that's, that, that's the game-changing signing. But Lissandro Martinez in himself can do a little bit of that. Possession from deep. Being that person who receives the ball from De Gea. Who can drive through a little bit of... Into, into a bit of space. Who can break the lines. Who can bring it out from defence. We need that. We need that ball carrier from deep. It is a clear missing piece from this Ten Hag system. And it's a shame there that it ends in defeat. I think Ten Hag will be happy overall with the performance. As I said, my man of the match is probably going to go to Fred. I thought he had a cracking game. Really showed how he can fit inside this Ten Hag system. But also at the same time... Him and McTominay both being there. Maguire, Maguire and Lindelof, we are missing that deeper ball carrier. We need that desperately if we're going to have any chance this season. But yeah, without Jaden Sancho, we didn't have a, 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 any threat at all on the right. And Atletico Madrid could defend that pretty easy. But Ericsson's debut, yes, please. How Fred played, yes, please. Rashford, I thought, looked pretty bright. And Malice here. There's a, a good few positives to take. If I'm saying the negatives, as I said, 
uh, our inability to play out from the back with the ball is still there. De Gea is still looking nervous. There's a lot of nerves in that back five still. And also in the, the two midfielders in front of them. But let me know what you think in the comments below. You know, it's, it's, it's pre-season. Results don't ultimately matter. It's the performance of what we saw. Given what happened last in March against Atletico Madrid to that. I, I, won't, I won't take they take the defeat. But I don't think he'll, Ten Hag will be overly angry with it. You can let me know what you think though in the comments below. As you always do. <laughs>